Hello, brothers and sisters. Let's take a moment to reflect on our identity in Jesus, shall we? Would others say that you are more of a thermometer for Jesus or a thermostat for Jesus? I know this may sound like a really kind of a weird question, but hang with me for just a second as we just have a little look at these definitions. So a thermometer, as you know, takes its cues from the outside world. You bring it into a room and it will let the room determine what the temperature will be versus a thermostat does the exact opposite. It sets the mood for the room. So I'd like to say it's more of an inside job that's happening inside when you're transforming from one to another. And a well-known parable came to mind that I want to read to you out of Luke. This is where Jesus was teaching and he uses parables as we know to teach and get his point across. And this one has stuck with me for years, ever since I was little and I first heard. Luke 6, 46 to 49. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? As for everyone who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice, I will show you what they are like. They are like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when a flood came, the torrent struck that house, but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck the house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. Can you make that connection? If we choose to walk in our identity in Christ, we must first know who he is says that we are. I believe that a good place to start is when we look at Psalm 139, and we're going to jump to verses 23 and 24. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Many in the body of Christ, I believe, have not been aware of who God actually says they are. Or that they actually need to spend time with Jesus to find out who he says that they actually are. I know that the Bible says that Jesus loves us. And as a Christian, most people, that's what they start to understand Jesus and that relationship to be based upon. But he has so much more that he is saying to you and about you and for you. And unless we actually intentionally spend time with him, we won't know what that actually is. We're going to be tossed about like waves in the sea going, is this what he means? Maybe this is what he means, right? We know that the enemy is prowling around like a lion seeking to devour and destroy. We need to know that God is speaking to us. His sheep know his voice. Jesus says that, right? How do we learn to know what his voice says? Well, we have to spend time with him. Another thing that I believe about the body of Christ is there's a lot of people out there playing church. And it actually, to be honest, breaks my heart. And this may come across as a bit offensive to some of you, but it is with a correction to try and say that there is much work to be done to build the kingdom of God here. God has commissioned us right? When Jesus left the earth, he actually gave us that command. He said, go into all the world and make disciples. What is a disciple? It's not just somebody who just says, I believe in Jesus and that's it. It's a disciple is somebody who learns how to be a follower of Jesus. And how do we learn how to do that? Well, we need to know who God says we are and we need to spend time with him and we need to spend time in a community of believers who want to help us to foster that because we're infants. We, we're young in the faith when we come and we say, yes, Jesus, be in my heart. I want to live for you. But we need people to come alongside us and help us learn how to actually live that out, how to walk out our faith, right? So there is much work to be done here on earth, building up that kingdom and preparing for Jesus' return for his bride. The global church, I really believe, has the opportunity right now to step up into that calling in a much greater way than they have been to date. When I think back to what Paul says in his letter to the Ephesians, I'm just going to read it to you. 
He says, then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people and their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, and that is Christ. That's in Ephesians 4, verses 14 to 15. Now, just as in any relationship, you need to invest in quality time with them. See, this is what I believe that God is desiring for us to do. So I, I created a little acronym that I think is just a little bit of fun to, to write out the word identity. So I, I am who God says I am. D, decide to go deeper into his word. E, eternal perspective. N, now is the time to choose love. T, time with Jesus is key. God's word is active and alive in me. I, intentionality, being interruptible and available to listen to what the Holy Spirit is actually prompting us to do. T, thankful. We enter his courts with praise and his gates with thanksgiving. Y, Yahweh. The breath of God is in you. Remember that next time you take a nice deep breath, that that is how close God is to you. See, so what we believe about God and who he says we are is foundational in how we act, how we think, what we believe, and what we choose to do every single day. And when we find ourselves in a tricky environment, that's not going to be easy if we haven't already settled that ahead of time. Thus, by choosing to be a Christ-like thermostat, I can choose to shift that environment that I'm walking into. I can ask the Holy Spirit in an awkward or uncomfortable situation for divine strategies, for divine wisdom, for words, or maybe it's when not to speak. Maybe it's just to listen, but we need to be in tune to what the Holy Spirit is actually saying. We need to understand our identity as a child of God, as a son or a daughter of the most high God, of the King of Kings, right? We are heirs with Christ. We need to understand that that is our position in the kingdom, that we carry that authority and what we speak into the atmosphere around us shifts things, right? The Bible says when we speak the name of Jesus, darkness will flee. So the enemy does not want us to be speaking and saying the good things and speaking truth and speaking the words and promises of God aloud. So we need to be conscious of that. And that's why we need to spend time in his word, have a solid understanding of who he is and who he says we are. So that when we step into those situations, we have a better grounding to be that thermostat because we don't want to be a thermometer where we literally are just reflecting back to the person in front of us what they are carrying, what they are holding on to, right? If you walk into an electrically charged conversation or environment and there is anger that you were not feeling before you stepped in there, you can recognize that is theirs, that's not yours. And you can actually have that opportunity to stop and pray before you speak because God has given you that discernment to be able to walk in and actually shift that environment for good. Even just a smile, even just a nod, even just listening, that person may just need to be heard. But what you say is actually gonna determine what happens in the environment. So we need to be really wise about what we choose to say and not say. As believers and followers of Jesus, I believe that we are called to a higher standard than those who are in the world. We are ambassadors of Christ. We are representing the kingdom of heaven to those around us. And what is different? Well, God's grace. God's grace is the difference. You may be asking, okay, wait, how does this actually relate to being a thermometer and a thermostat again? Hang with me here. See, being empowered by God's grace is recognizing and accepting God's unconditional love for you. Thus, this is what will empower you. It will transform you if we let it. It's like the Holy Spirit installs special software inside us, enabling us to be special agents of change. It says in Hebrews 13, 25, may God's grace be with you all. See, God's word is grace fuel that powers your thermostat with truth, which in turn, you can thus choose to ask God to rewire your mind to change your self-limiting beliefs, thoughts, and attitudes by renewing your mind. It's always a choice each day. Nobody is going to make that choice for you. It's up to you to decide. When you wake up in the morning, 
It's up to you to decide when you walk into an environment that may not be easy, that may be awkward, that may be uncomfortable. It is your choice what you choose to say and how you choose to represent God in that moment. Let's think back on Acts 2 when 120 of God's people were all gathered together of one accord with expectant hearts. Wow. It Talk about a shift in the atmosphere. I encourage you to jump into Acts and have a little read through how that impacted thousands of people right after that one event, in addition to, you know, centuries later, how it's still impacting each of us today. Are we actually positioned to receive what God has for us, as well as for those around us? In John 16, 33, he says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Jesus' words are true. We can believe them. He is for us, and if he is for us, who can be against us? In 2 Corinthians 3, 5, it says, It is not that we think that we are qualified to do anything on our own. Our qualification comes from God. We are living in crazy times around the world right now. And I'd like to encourage each of you that you are created to be where you are living, doing what you are doing right now. We are living in a crazy time in history around the world right now. And I want to encourage you that God has created you and is trusting you where you are living to step out for this season to be an ambassador for him, to help shift the atmosphere. We carry hope. And as an ambassador of the kingdom of heaven, that is what people are looking for. They are looking for hope. We are hope carriers, right? Paul says in his letter to the Philippians, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything which we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. So that's Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7, one of my favorite verses. So in closing, let's all choose to write out this next verse. And I'd like you to post it somewhere that you can actually read it, be reminded of it, even memorize it. Philippians 3, 14 says, I press on to reach the end of the race and to receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. One of my favorite songs is by Matt Redman. 10,000 reasons. You may be familiar with it. I just want to, in closing, I just want to speak a few of those words just in praise to God because I think he is so worthy. The song says, your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness, I will keep on singing. 10,000 reasons for my heart to find. Let us sing like never before. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and worship his holy name. Revelations 21, 24 to 25 says, By its light will the nations walk, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. And its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. We have all of eternity to look forward to. Let's get to work, brothers and sisters, and do what God's called us to do. Be blessed.